Hey guys, welcome to InventBox, and in today's video I'm going to be introducing you to Blender version 2.8 beta. Now even though that this Blender version is a beta, I've found that it is actually a very stable program. I haven't had it really crash on me very often unless I try to really overload it with stuff that you wouldn't normally be doing. So let's get started. And as soon as you start your Blender file, there's probably one thing you'll notice immediately if you're used to using Blender 2.79b or um, versions before that. It's left click select. Now if you're just now starting in Blender, this could be not really any different to you and you're like, what? Left click select? Isn't that the same in every software? Well actually, in the older Blender versions, it's right click select. And to deselect your object, now you can just click out in the gray space and it'll actually deselect and then click to select with the left key. Now if you hit edit, preferences you can go into key map and change it back to right and now you're back to right click select if you're really used to that but I sure do like the left click select it really makes it easier if you're transferring between software is going from blender to inkscape and you just don't you don't have to get used to the different programs because I've definitely had that happen so as you can see everything is quite a bit different the layout of the entire software is much different than 2.79b you can see all of your tabs are up here in full display you don't have to click a drop down and then over here you have all of these tabs which has your rendering tab and as you can see we have the new rendering engine which is EV and I'll show you that in a minute and then you have your render output settings so this is where you set your resolution where it renders to this is a lot different than what they had before before that was all just kinda crammed into the render tab so they've just kinda cleaned this up and made it a little bit more simple to use now what we'll do to show you the new EV rendering system I'm gonna go to side view here and Put some light sources there, and there, just like that. Select those, copy them, move them just to get some light. Now we're just going to make a plane, scale it up, and then you might be wondering, well, how do I move this? I'm used to the arrows or something like that. Over here, you have these options. Now, in the older Blender versions, it said translate. And you're like, what does translate mean? I guess it's actually a mathematical term, but translate means to move your object. And now they've simplified that just to the move button. And if I click on that, then your arrows will appear. And I can drag the plane into place. We could go to the side view here. Bring it up. Just like that. And now for the really cool part that I like about 2.8 is a huge, huge accomplishment. It's the rendering engine, which is Eevee. So down here, if we switch into rendered view, boom, you can see we actually have a real-time rendered viewport, which is different than any other version. You had to switch into cycles, and it would render in the cycles step by step, and it wasn't smooth at all. But now we have this real-time rendering, which is super nice. Now, we can also select objects, and that's just with left-click, and it has a orange box around it in the old rendering engine. Whenever you selected something, there was no orange box. It was a little bit hard to work in the render tab. But now we can actually move around and select objects. Now, the one thing that I think is a little bit of a drawback with using, using Eevee is you can't add plane lighting. So if I copy the plane here, bring the plane up, and give it an emission, you can see it's not actually producing any light. And that's one thing that Eevee won't do, and it actually can't. So if you do want light to be produced, you'll have to switch your rendering engine from Eevee to Cycles, and now this plane will be producing light. So other than that, EV can be pretty useful, so it just depends on what you're working on. It's really nice having the real-time rendering viewport. 
So now what's super useful now as you can see is you have the light sources and the camera all exposed there which you didn't have before in the old versions. Now if you don't want to get rid of them down here in the overlays you can click on that and it'll get rid of all the overlays, the grid, the camera, the lights. But if you don't want to turn them all off you can click on the tab here and just say turn off the grid or you can just turn off the axes or you can add a z-axis so this can be really useful for whatever you're doing if you just want to get rid of a few things like if you just wanted to get rid of the lights or stuff like that this is a lot more useful so you can get rid of certain things that you would want to get rid of and then you have your rendered view, your look dev, um, your solid view, and your wireframe. Now, this is something that I really like that they changed in wireframe mode. Before, all the lines were the same. It was basically as if you're in <clears throat> a orthographic view, you don't really see depth. The lines that are farther away were the same thickness as the lines that were close up. But now, if you look here, you can obviously see that these lines are closer than those lines and that would be hard if you have two vertices right beside each other and you're trying to select just one of them and you can't tell which one's closer and now you can really see with the depth effects they put on wireframe mode now if you're in wireframe mode and you want to move stuff around if I move this plane up you can see it actually has a gray outline of where the plane is making contact with the cube. And if we go back into object mode, if I select the cube and I want to put it on top, before you'd have to go like that, check under, move it up. But as you can see now, it actually moves the selection box through the plane, which is super useful. So I don't have to keep checking under the plane to see if my cube is sticking through. I can just balance it like that and know I'm good. So as you can see, Blender 2.8 is a super useful option, especially if you're just getting started with Blender. I would highly recommend it for new Blender beginners. So if you guys found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on InventBox.